Hello, and welcome to Wall Street Training's exhibit on share repurchase. If we were to take our assumed estimated cost of equity, which you can say ROE in quotes, but this is not true ROE because we're not taking book value, how we get this is we'll take our net income of $51, 49.2, 49.2, and we will divide that by our equity value. Recall equity value is going to be 850, 820, and then 820. 51 divided by 850, 820, and 820. And this actually conveniently, let's check the math on this, will get you 51, 850, will get you a 6% ROE, 49.2 over 820, also gets you a 6% ROE in quotes cost of equity. Our after-tax cost of debt is simply our 10% times 1 minus T, which is 40%, also gets you 6% in all three scenarios. Therefore, in this particular scenario, what we are saying is that there is no change in earnings per share simply because the cost of equity as well as the after-tax cost of debt are exactly identical. Therefore, the company has not gained by altering the capital structure. That's not necessarily always an appropriate uh, assumption to use considering that a 10% cash interest income rate is probably pretty high and perhaps a cost of debt of 10% is also can be considered pretty high. So let's modify this and let's see how this will work if we were to use a 6% cost of debt as well as a 3% interest income rate. And let's see now how the numbers change. And here you will see very quickly that we will actually have an increase to our earnings per share because we have swapped a higher cost of funding, the equity portion, with a lower cost of debt on the capital structure. Let's turn back to our exhibit. So in our exhibit here, again, let's look at the same three scenarios. We'll look at it from a status quo scenario, the, again, the cash, as well as the debt. And here we will assume that we now have a debt interest expense rate of 6% and we will have an interest income rate on the cash of 3% and let's see how our numbers are now affected. Let's again start with our EBIT. Now our EBIT stays the same at $100 in all three scenarios. Our interest expense, recall that on the status quo scenario we had $200 at 6%. This gives you a $12. Here, same thing, $12. And then now we have 230 at 6%, and this will get you $13.80. Interest income scenario here, you will have $50 of interest income at 3%. This gives you plus 1.5 of additional income. We now have only $20 of cash at 3%, gives you 0.6. And here, under the used debt scenario, again, that would be the same 1.5. And if you were to extrapolate this back down to pre-tax income, earnings before taxes, and you do the math, 100 minus 12 plus 1.5 gets you 89.5 of pre-tax. 100 minus 12 plus 0.6 gets you 88.6. 100 minus 13.8 plus 1.5 gets you 87.7. When you were to take a 40% tax rate now, 40% of 89.5, let's take a quick look at this, 89.5.4 is 35.8, 88.6.4 multiplied is 35.4, and 87.7, 40% is 35.8, 08.1 08 rounded, and you were to look at net income, net income now when you do the math gets you 53.7, 53.2, uh, we have a slight decrease in net income, as well as 52.6, an even smaller increase, uh, an even smaller net income amount. However, now we can see the difference. If you were to take our shares outstanding from on top, 100 shares, 96.47, 96.47 from on top, you now have earnings per share. When you do the math, let's take a look at this. 53.7 is simply going to be 53.7 cents. 53.2, 96.47 divide will get you 55.15, so 55.1 cents, an increase to our EPS. 52.6, 96.47 divide is 55.54.5 cents. And clearly he, here, now we will see that we truly have an increase 
to our earnings per share because we have swapped, again, a higher cost of capital, the equity, with a lower cost of our debt. And let's take a look at this again and really quickly calculate our estimated cost of equity, our ROE in quotes, as well as our after-tax cost of debt or after-tax cost of funding. And under the status quo scenario, our net income is 53.7 divided by our equity value, if we recall, of $850. We will now take 53.2 of net income over 820, 52.6 over 820, and let's quickly do the math. 53.7, 850 is 6.3%. 53.2 over 820 is 6.48, 6.5% cost of equity. 52.6 over the 820 is a 6.4%. So in all cases here, we now see that we have slightly different ROEs. Let's look at our cost of debt, or rather our cost of funding. Our cost of cash in this particular case is simply going to be our 3% times our 1 minus T, so 3% times 60% gets us to a 1.8% cost of funding. And here, at a 6% times 60%, that gets us a 3.6% after tax cost of debt. So clearly here, you will see that in all, in all three scenarios here, or in these rather, in these two share repurchase scenarios, our cost of funding has been lowered and therefore this allows us to have that greater earnings per share. So folks, let's summarize what that means. Again, in a base case scenario, if all capital markets are efficient, there should be no change to the actual value of the stock price based on drilling down from enterprise value down to earnings per share, down to stock price per share. However, in a scenario where we have the cost of equity, the cost of the equity capital versus the cost of the debt or the cash to fund a share repurchase. If they are equal, you will see no change. There should be no change to the earnings per share. When does, however, a share repurchase actually provide additional value? That happens in a very simple case where the cost of acquiring those shares and removing them from the market, when that is lower than the cost of those shares being out there to begin with. In other words, the cost of debt or the cost of cash to fund the purchase of those shares is lower than the cost of the equity. And folks, that is a scenario there where we have now fully explained the sh full implications of the share repurchase. Thank you very much.